Thank you for joining us. I'm Erin Gregg, joined by our production team of Lubbock ISD TV students, and we're excited to share how Lubbock ISD focuses on every child, every day. Our district has many talented students involved in our fine arts programs, and we're excited to share that one of our students at the Talking to the School for Young Women Leaders has made it to Allstate Choir, making her the first in the school's history to do so. No one else had made it at our school, so I didn't really have a high expectation for myself, but it was very shocking. For junior Ashley Eastling, making the Texas Allstate Choir came as a surprise. But choir director Donna Barbie says she knew Eastling could do it. The first time she came in here, she actually sang for me. Right then, I just knew she was a super talented kid and that she would do amazing. Making Allstate Choir is not easy especially when we're following safety protocols due to the pandemic. As far as singing with mask on, auditioning through tapes instead of going face to face, um, I think it is amazing that she was able to do what she did. Having natural talent helps that, but at the same time, I think she wants to always just to be excellent in what she does. And I think she proves that all across the board in school, not just in music. Other kids that were doing the Allstate process this year would look up to her. They always wonder how she did because they know she's, you know, she's great. But at the same time, I think they saw her work hard. We always tell our girls, reject average and embrace excellence. And so I think this really empowers all other girls to know that anything is possible. I'm uh, honored, <laughs> I guess. Um, I think it's very actually kind of shocking that no one else made it from this school, but excited to have been the first one and hope that people will continue on and other people will make it at this school and so that we can just have the legacy that we're the school that we make it to state. <laughs> My heart is breaking. We do want to congratulate all of our students who've been named to Texas All-State Music Competitions. Joining us now in the studio is Sarah Gibson. Sarah is an instructional specialist for our Gifted and Talented program. And Sarah, you've got some updates to share with us. So thank you for joining us today. And um, we just wanted to have you here to talk about some of the updates that you're working on to improve Gifted and Talented Education in Lubbock ISD. So give us an overview. Awesome, thank you for having me on because this, this is a wonderful opportunity to, to see all of this. Um, so Gifted and Talented is um, currently undergoing some changes. We've had some changes in our department and we want to make sure that we are serving every student every day. And that also includes our Gifted and Talented students. So um, of our students that are identified, we, we have about 8% of our uh, population identified as Gifted and Talented. And we wanna make sure that those parents know um, what their students are capable of, that the teachers know what their students are capable of, and really providing the resources for them to be the best teachers and parents for them as well in, that, in those areas. Um, gifted and talented students are, are typically um, thought of as the, the, the high achievers, the, the all A students, and, and, and sometimes they don't get the growth that they deserve as well, and we want to communicate that they also get those, those types of things, whether it's enriching activities, um, giving them some additional time to work on something else. Um, we have started with some communication pieces where we want to communicate to parents um, what all is available for their parents in GT, and then also for teachers, how can they help? Because um, that's one of the areas that just, when we go through our certification, we, we don't discuss how to how to serve GT students because they're so out of the box and which is why we love them usually. So, um, so we're working on some communication. We're trying to um, get on social media and share some things and just be a presence in the community and, and, and build some, some bridges there and so that we have a place to, to call to when, when we need help and, and things like that. So, when I you know, I know we did a survey not long ago where you got some feedback from not only teachers, mm -hmm. um, but also some parents, hopefully. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and that's just one piece of like what you're taking mm -hmm. as feedback to work on improving the, the experience for students. Yes, um, there was some fantastic feedback in that survey from both parents and teachers. And I was so excited to be able to read um, the things that they said and, and, and truly take to heart and, and say, how can we 
get this to be better and how can we address um, the feelings that you have and so <clears throat> I think we are on a good path we are making some department um, connections working with getting um, our communication in Spanish as well um, working with Margaret del Toro and um, and then also working with our content um, specialists in in central office to make sure that we are uh, aligning what I am doing with their content so that it's not something else for the teachers to do because we know we don't need something else for the teachers to do. So um, with that, one of those, um, that survey, we looked at, um, we had a group of some central office people and um, principals, counselors, teachers, and some parents that all dived into that uh, survey information and we are actually making those changes as a, as a committee. Um, that committee is open to anyone to attend if, if you, they reach out to us um, and we can get them an invite. It's on Zoom right now because um, of having to quarantine and, and all of that. But, um, but we've got some really great minds that have made some really great decisions and, and committed us to some things and I'm super excited for what is coming in the spring semester. Well, we'll have to have y'all back to talk about all the new changes and updates. I um, would love to. That would be would great. Well, thank you for spending a few minutes with us today talking about yeah. gifted and talented education. Thank you very much. We are grateful to have so many wonderful partners who support Lubbock ISD students and staff. Of course, we'd always love to add more. If you would like to become one of our partners, just log on to lubbockisd.org slash pi, or you can contact Phyllis Underwood with the information on your screen. And we're always happy to feature our partners' contributions here on Highlights. You can check out all of our partner stories online at lubbockisdtv.com. Now, let's go on location. location at Miller Elementary School today with Officer Josh Parrish and our brand new Lubbock ISD police dog, Hedra. So Officer Parrish, we're so excited because she is new to the district. And so um, it's exciting to have a dog after Bad, our former police dog, retired last fall after 12 years with Lubbock ISD. So tell us about our new uh, member of our family. Hedra is a two-year-old Belgian Malinois. She just started on with the district right before the Christmas break. Uh, she is trained to search out narcotics. And so I know you've been out visiting campuses and just letting kids see her. We know that they can't touch her because she's a working dog. And so tell us what that experience has been like and how the kids have reacted. Which, uh, the kids have been receptive to her. They're, I mean, obviously they're disappointed because they're not allowed to pet her, but they've, she's kind of gotten used to them. They've kind of gotten used to her. So it's been, been a, a good situation so far. Well, and you mentioned that a, a police dog for a school district is usually looking for narcotics, usually at a middle or high school, right? But also there's a community aspect of it. And so that's part of the reason of bringing the kids, uh, bringing the dog to see the kids and letting the kids understand that she is a working dog and you can see her, but you need to understand that it, you shouldn't touch her when she's doing her job. Absolutely, yeah. It's just getting the kids kind of used to working with first responders of all kinds, whether it's canine, whether it's human, police, fire, EMS, etc. Yeah, human or dog, right? Tell us a little bit about her training and how you train her for this job. I, I went down to, to pick her up and we had to get used to each other and learn the commands and learn learn how we work best together. And then when we got back, we have we just go uh, train with the Lubbock PD and the, the Sheriff's Office canine handlers once a week or so just to keep her on point. Is this your first experience with having a canine at your house? Yes, it is. As far as we have uh, our personal dogs, but never, never been in this, the situation where I have to have a working dog at home. Well, tell me what that experience has been like so far. Uh, it's been good. We work at uh, school and then, I mean, once I go off shift, she goes home and she's off shift too. So Awesome. Just as advice for people in general, like we talked about the best way to behave whenever you see a working dog, um, tell us like normally whenever people see a dog out and about um, at school, for example, or even out at the store or something, how they should behave around these animals. Uh, basically, we just tell the kids they got, got to keep calm. Uh, she feeds off of the, the squeals and the yelling and she's not not the biggest fan, but as long as they keep calm and keep it low key, then she's, she's usually pretty good. Well, and sounds like she's learning just like the kids, right? So. Absolutely. <laughs>
Awesome. Well, we appreciate you um, talking with us for a few minutes today. We also learned that Hedra takes her commands in a language other than English. Now let's check in with Ben Lawson to see what's happening on our campus social media pages. Students certainly enjoyed the snow day on January 11th. Pre-K students at Honey Elementary put together this video showing them having snow much fun. At Irvin Elementary, students put on their best head covers to celebrate National Hat Day. It's recognized each year on January 15th. Second graders at Hardwick Elementary were buzzing about painting honeycombs during art class. Overton Elementary hosted an iStation Dreambox Challenge and Logan Howe took the top prize, a Patrick Mahomes jersey. Logan logged 290 minutes on iStation and 82 lessons on Dreambox over the holiday break. Uriah Velasquez. Parsons Elementary students celebrated accomplishments from the second nine weeks during their Honor Club Awards. Way to go, Pirates! At Waters Elementary, students celebrated National Bubble Day. They read King Big Goods in the Bathtub and then, of course, Blue Bubbles. Coronado High School counseling and mental health classes had an elementary school counselor speak to the classes and she brought Rainy the therapy dog. They saw and experienced how a dog can relieve stress and make you feel better. Estacada High School celebrated the Matadors' first time competing in UIL State in the Spirit Championships. And a big congratulations to all of our Lubbock ISD students who played beautifully in the Lubbock All District Band Concert. It marked the first live concert for our students this school year and they were able to play in the Helen Devitt Jones Theater inside of the new Buddy Holly Hall of Performing Arts and Sciences. Don't forget to follow your child's campus on social media to see more great stories, and make sure you're following Lubbock ISD to keep up with district news, events, and more. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search for Lubbock ISD. Thanks, Ben. Coming up on the calendar, we want to remind families that students will not have class on Friday, January 29th, as our staff takes part in our first of three added planning days. The 29th is also when our campus transfer window closes. For more information on transfers, just log on to lubbockisd.org transfers. Online requests must be submitted by 5 o'clock on the 29th. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next week to highlight more great opportunities only in Lubbock ISD. This has been a production of the students and staff at Lubbock ISD TV.